Hello and welcome to another episode of the Organic Adventure Show. I am your host, Cy Rodriguez, and today we're going to be talking about omega-3 fatty acids. And not so much the benefits, because most people probably know the benefits, just to name a couple, brain health, heart health, and um, other functions in the body. Um, your body can't create these omega-3 fatty acids specifically, when I'm talking about, or omega-6s. Um, that's why they're called essential, because you have to get them from outside of your body. Um, your body doesn't synthesize them from other things you eat. So all of the omega-3 fatty acids are important, but the mo one of the most concerned is omega-3 fatty acids and its relationship to omega-6. So there are a lot of people out there that believe that you can only get the right omega-3s from DHA and EPA. And those are translated as docosahexanoic acid and eicosapentaenoic acid. Um, e, P, A, and D, H, A. And those are the essentials of the essentials. Um, most people believe you can only get those from fish or from, from fish for the most part. Um, there's this theory you can get them from eggs. Honestly, the reason you can get them from eggs is sometimes um, chickens are fed a diet high in specific seeds like flax or chia that would give them um, more omega-3 fatty acids, but they still wouldn't be creating the DHA um, unless they were being fed algae. And that is why fish have them, because they're eating algae. So the good news is, even if you're a strict vegetarian, vegan, for example, you can get them from algae now. And um, there are supplements on the market that are just um, algae, and you can get your DHA that way instead of having them from fish. But the good thing is, is that your body does create DHA and EPA from ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, in your body. This conversion rate is affected to some degree, at least it is believed by most of the people who have studied it, it's affected by the ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. So, most people get way too many omega-6s in their diet. And one of the reasons that this happens is because they eat so many oils. And many oils have really out of balance ratios of omega-6 to omega-3, meaning too high omega-6s, too low omega-3s, and in the oil they're concentrated. So this um, translates to high amounts and um, these override the amounts or ratios that would be in the food that people get regularly. So about this, just to set the record straight, if you were to eat about 11 grams of omega-3s per day, ALA, not the EPA or DHA, then your body would convert enough of those omega-3s into um, DHA and EPA. So about 11 grams of regular omega-3s, which is not hard to get at all. In fact, if you ate two flax, tablespoons of flax oil per day, you would be getting about 14 grams. So this is way far or way higher than you would get from eating any kinds of fish oil or um, other types of anything pretty much except for um, chia seeds which are the absolute highest in the omega-3 fatty acids and they are also in a perfect ratio which means that there's actually a lot more omega-3s than omega-6s in these two so these offset the balance of all of the other foods that you eat if you were just to have a, a tablespoon of flax oil a day and eat some chia seeds every day, um, maybe an ounce of chia seeds plus the flax oil, you'd get approximately 11,000 or so grams or, or milligrams, so 11 grams of EPA and DHA, or I'm sorry, you get ALA, which would be converted in the right amounts to DPA, e, <laughs> DHA, EPA. So, Knowing that, you can convert, even though the conversion rate is low, with that amount of um, alpha-linolenic acid, you can convert into enough DHA and EPA. That being said, for people who are eating fish or want to take fish oils, it has been shown that you would convert more, or that you actually get more of the DHA and EPA out of fish than you would out of fish oil supplements, although you can get um, your fish oil supplements to get 
EPA, DHA, because that would be the highest sources of EPA, DHA besides allergies. Just to set the record straight, EPA is also found in some plants and it's also in chocolate. It's, I guess, the highest green vegetable it would be found in would be purslane, and then it's also in high amounts in certain algaes, including Klamath Lake, blue green algae, um, chlorella, and um, spirulina. I believe also have EPA, um, although I don't know that 100% for sure. Many algaes do, um, but they do not have DHA, um, but other algaes do have DHA. So let's see if we've answered the questions here. The answers are, can you get enough conversion from omega-3 fatty acids from the form of ALA to EPA and DHA? The answer is yes. And just so you know, all foods for the most part, contain these essential fatty acids, even fruits, also vegetables, green vegetables in high amounts. So if you were to eat a lot of green vegetables and you were also to eat beans, then you would get very good ratios of your omega-3s to omega-6s. But I just want to tell you really quick what I did. I took a number of foods and I wrote them all down, wrote down what their different amounts of omega-6s to omega-3s were, and then I added them all up. And I also included um, one tablespoon of flax oil and one ounce of chia seeds in these ratios. And what I came up with for these foods, which were all vegetable foods or foods that were plant-based foods, no eggs or fish or dairy or anything um, that was meat, and there was 15,585 milligrams of omega-3s and 29,719 milligrams of omega-6s. So you would be getting a ratio of 1 to 2 with a whole food vegetarian diet with 1 tablespoon of omega-6s and 1 tablespoon of, I'm sorry, with 1 tablespoon of flax oil and 1 ounce of chia seeds in your diet added. And um, you could definitely offset those percentages a lot more just by having more flax oil. Like if you had two tablespoons of flax oil, you'd almost be at a one-to-one -one ratio, for example. Not quite, but it would be up there. Um, point here is, is that it's easy to achieve this ratio as long as you don't use a lot of other oils. And that brings up the last thing I want to talk about on this video, and that is it's better to eliminate almost all oils from your diet because Oils are not really good for you anyway, and to get high percentages of fats from oils as opposed to their food counterpart like nuts, seeds, or whatever foods that have oils in them, which are many, um, it's just not as good for you, but it also really does affect this omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So I think that flax oil and coconut oil are both good oils for their own reasons, but I would use those just as special treats, or at least sparingly. I wouldn't use them in large amounts. And um, as far as cooking goes, I've always thought that sunflower and safflower oils were good, but their omega-6 to omega-3 ratios are not so good. So if you wanted to, um, but they're, they're good for high heat. They don't smoke, so you don't get trans fatty acids and you don't create um, carcinogens by using sunflower and flax, or excuse me, sunflower and safflower oil for cooking. But canola oil might be your best bet for cooking because of its ratio to, of omega-6s to omega-3s, which is 2 to, th two to 1 about um, omega-6 to omega-3. And they, it also is a high heat oil as well. So because of that, I might recommend if you were going to cook that you would use the canola oil. Beyond that, I would just take oils for the most part out of your diet, except for forms of nuts, seeds, avocados, and just your regular foods that have um, that have oils in them. That being said, I hope that you learned something. Thank you so much for listening, and may every day be an adventure in health.